right, welcome everyone to the Tuesday Afternoon Advocate News Meeting. I'm editor and publisher Chris Cobbler. With me as always to my left. I'm Becky Cooper, managing editor. City Editor Tony Blandron's off one more day. Back yep. tomorrow you'll be glad yeah, you've been be nice. working a lot of hours. And behind the camera. Digital editor Thomas Martinez. So let us know what you think of the stories we're working on. Any suggestions you have for stories we should be working on. That's why we come on every weekday um, to hear from you. And um, we got a lot going on already today. It's a lot of news. Let me pull up. And we had a lot of good uh, comments and questions yesterday. I appreciate that. Let me uh, get this started here with the typing hello to show everybody how the game is played. And a trivia question to get everybody just warmed up and thinking. I'll share this. It's a fun question. Who wrote Johnny Cash's song, A Boy Named Sue? A Boy Named Sue. I'm going to... No, he didn't write his own songs. I thought he did. Oh, I don't think he wrote many songs, I don't think. Uh, let's see. I don't think he was Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, well, that's a good question. That's a good idea. I'm thinking Chris Christopherson's for some reason. In the 50s? No, that's my name's Sue was, 70s. no, that was seventies, uh, early 70s, early 70s. Yeah. yeah, that was back when Chris Christopherson was writing, whatever he's writing, he wrote several kind of country songs, but could be somebody else. I don't have any idea. Was it Can you sing it for me? Was it you kind of got that Johnny else? Cash voice. No, Johnny it, Cash sang it. I mean, but yeah. was it well, I don't want to name me Bobby or anything. Remember anybody but Sue? But uh, but uh, I don't. I, I don't. I only know. I only identify that song with Johnny Cash. That's I mean, mm -hmm. it's possible somebody sang it. Well, sometimes, sure it sometimes the art. It could be Neil Diamond. Then. No, he wrote a lot of monkey songs before he got to be popular on his own. Like Day Dream, Day Dream Believer. And, uh, whatever he I don't know. Anyway, so let's see. Looking to see what else we got going on. We'll come as quirky as these answers are and questions are, I bet it's a woman. A woman, huh? And I can't think of a woman country. Who was writing songs during the 70s or yeah. late 60s? Could be. It'd be Jim Stafford. Oh. Jim Stafford. Who he wrote, wrote fun songs. He wrote, I don't like spiders and snakes. Yeah. I'll yeah. say Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Mitchell. Well, that'll be a departure for her. Uh, uh, Ray Stevens, who wrote. Ray, like, yeah. Like the streak. The streak. The streak. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Could be Ray Stevens. Yeah. Jim Stafford. I also liked his lesser known hit, uh, Wildwood Weed. Remember that song? I have to hear it. Well, Wildwood Weed grew wild on the farm. We never okay. knew what it was called. Okay. Some says a flower, some says a weed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, was a, that was a. I enjoyed that song when I was twelve or whatever that was, <laughs> even though I really wasn't fully getting the references to uh, marijuana that it was. Anyway. I'm sure plenty of people did. Oh uh, well, that was the whole popularity of it. Yeah. Back in those seventies, hazy daisy days of the seventies. All right, but uh, on, on to the news. We'll get to actual news here. Um, we have a couple of breaking news stories already posted to victoriaadvocate.com, and we'll see about updating them as well. Uh, sad story is that overnight, a uh, mother and her eight-year-old daughter uh, escaped through a window of their trailer after it caught fire. Um, a puppy, a chihuahua puppy, uh, died in the fire. And uh, a tough thing for the family is also is that their trailer is uninsured, total loss. Um, we've got information about how to help, but we'll uh, continue. We're checking with the Red Cross to see what they're doing, too. Well, the banging she heard on her air conditioner and all that, was that the neighbor trying to get what get her attention, or was it think, the fire? I think that's what it was, okay. the neighbor trying to get her to get wake up. up. Yeah, yeah that, that those trailers, especially older trailers, would burn fast. Mm -hmm. That could have easily been a double fatality, mm -hmm. so thankful that they got out for mm -hmm. sure and, and uh, Morgan O'Hanlon and Evan Lewis were out there uh, talking with them uh, so tough tough situation there um, then uh, just posted at victoriaadvocate.com is uh, Victoria Police announced they've arrested five people in connection with last week's uh, shooting on what street was that on Swan Street Swan, Swan street. street yeah uh, it was a drive-by shooting mm -hmm. um, and I added it to page three it wasn't on there Oh, uh, it's under A1 contender right oh, now. Okay. That's where I'm seeing it. Okay. Um, but 45 what um, 
They were all like 18, 17, the suspects? How old were they? Three 18 year olds, two 17 year olds. Three 18 year olds, two 17 year olds. It's a pity that people uh, that young get that astray. Uh, Colby just joined us. How are you? Are you a Johnny Cash fan? Ring of Fire? Can't beat that. Then, um. Here's a poll question for you. Okay, what's that? The late same thing we're writing about. What's Johnny Cash? Uh, Johnny Cash is the best song. There you go. Just kind of random to people who aren't watching the show. But. Right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's uh, any news hook to that, but we'll think about it. Then, so, uh, his song about um, he's in prison and he. He's in some prison. And he smuggles out car parts and he's building this car one piece at a time. <laughs> Y'all ever heard that one? Oh, it's not Folsom Prison? You're thinking something different. No, it's a different song. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know no, all my Johnny Cash. That's a pretty funny song. Then uh, we had St. Joe had their first full day of classes. Mm -hmm. So Amber was out there talking with students and teachers. And VSD, first full day is Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica was at a court hearing for Tyler Shelton. Uh, that's the sad story uh, that she detailed really well in a, a previous report about um, a young man who has suffered from mental illness and um, uh, was trespassing on a piece of property that wasn't his, uh, but clearly because he was in a state of crisis. And uh, he pleaded guilty today to burglary of this building, yeah, but he got a deferred sentence of five years and the assault cases were dismissed. That, that's interesting because when he was in jail and had, had attempted suicide, uh, he was accused of assaulting jailers mm -hmm. while there. That was also, if you go look at her story, we'll link to it with this coverage to that story, the, the headline, Mother Watches Helplessly as System Fails Her Son, a really powerful story and, and really um, illustrative of the, the problem that, that law enforcement have when they're pulled into these kind of cases. She did get a few comments from his mom, okay. but the attorney wanted to offer questions from Nina. Ah, uh, was that Jordan, her attorney? No, uh, no. Wilkerson. Oh, the okay. Then, um, everybody we wants things written. Anyway, uh, we got our selfie contest, so cats, cat lovers need to keep sending their photos in. Uh, where is cats and owners? So you get a chance to win $25 gift certificate from Charlene's gifts. Um, we also have, let's see, looking down, there was a wreck uh, this morning at 7300 block of Lone Tree Road. Morgan's got the details. I don't know all the details, but we probably should post that soon. I think it's so, posted, isn't it? Is it? Lone Tree? I haven't seen that one. Have you seen it, Tom? Lone Tree wreck? I don't think so. I think she turned in about the same time she turned in the shooting arrest. Uh, I don't know if Meredith posted it. I didn't see it online, so I'll have to double she check on that. Told anybody, so. Then I uh, understand the Elections Commission voted to promote the interim director to the, be actually the director. She's been interim for a long time. Uh, Margarita Hill? Mm -hmm. Is that right? And does the Commissioner's Court have to ratify that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, does, does Dennis Patel? Yeah. Okay. Dennis is talking about cooking scallops and tuna. Scallops and tuna? He says, Is it those together? No. <laughs> so when it's uh, hot, it's it's hard to stand in front of a hot stove. So seafood is a, a good, quick meal to cook. Hmm. It doesn't take true. long to cook it. Well, that's a poll question. We want to ask you like scallops, or do you want to ask you like tuna? Which? What's your favorite seafood? But I don't think he's talking about the tuna out of the can. No, no he's no. suggesting you go all the way up to to uh, actually get the tuna steaks. Yeah, tuna. Get it fresh uh, off the boat. It's preferable. Like tuna steaks. I had a. I don't. I don't really like them that much. I had a, a tuna once that wasn't cooked. What's that process called? Whatever. Um, tartar. Tar. Yeah. Tartar. Tar. Tar. Kind of nasty, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't think I'll be trying it again. Yeah. Well, he suggests that you eat the tuna raw, uh, rare. I like all my food cooked I pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, not my vegetables improve, but fish, meat, I pretty much want it cooked. I mean, I. I I don't understand people would get a good steak and order it well done. I don't, I don't no, know. That that. Like what? And just get a lot lesser quality of meat. Yeah, we'll just bring it. a piece of jerky with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be a well done person, yeah. but now I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I, I like a 
you know, medium with a good touch of pink in there, good pink in there. But as long as it's not bleeding. I yeah, just yeah. Do medium rare could be good too. I like that, but it just depends. Sometimes people get carried away with what medium rare means when they go a lot closer to rare. Yeah, but anyway, so tuna steak. Then uh, what else we got here? Other than good living. Of course, we've got a restaurant inspection report, so you got to know where to eat mm -hmm. by reading that every week and know what the health department says is a clean restaurant to go to. And all our other regular good living features in sports. We've got, uh, let's see, Rays and Goalie after football practice. We are well underway in, in football. Tyler is at uh, West's home opener against East Bernard. I wonder if they will ever reunify with West Bernard. I think that will ever happen. No. <laughs> you never, you, you also said the Berlin Wall would never fall, didn't you? You were one of those. People. No, I didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked, I, 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 I was shocked that that happened. I was like, wow, the Berlin yeah, Wall I think, fell. Because it had been my whole think, life, yeah, our whole exactly. life, the Berlin Wall had been there and then suddenly it just fell. Maybe, maybe after Chernobyl, watching that, the Soviet Union was a mess. Um, yeah, anyways. Still is. Still, well, Russia well, now. Right. But it's not the Soviet Union. But let's see, uh, what else we got? Astros? After China, walk, right while China falls, and that's a whole <laughs> different story. Well, that's been there for dynasties. Yeah, exactly. Astros against the White Sox, a 340 start for some reason. I'm not sure why they're starting so early, but they are. And. Uh, Let's see what else we got. The State Digest. There's a few interesting stories. Texas Tribune has a story about um, comparing the how San Antonio uh, deals with the homeless versus Austin. That's topical, given what's being discussed and debated in Victoria now. Governor Abbott apparently said San Antonio does a better job with uh, handling the homeless than Austin, and the experts the Texas Tribune talked to apparently say no, Austin does a lot better job we'll see um, then uh, text screen also has a story about uh, their new laws that free up alcohol access in Texas starting September 1 so you know we can, apparently it's certain certain breweries now will be allowed to sell their beer to go and more restaurants will be able to deliver beer and wine to customers so, uh, I wish we had a nice brew pub so I could buy my beer to go but we don't really have one that does their own beer. Got the one down in Port Lavaca that we're doing the story on. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go try that one. It's gonna be the Discover magazine. Mm -hmm. Goliath yeah. Brewery doesn't do its own beer. Oh, I think they do. They do. They do. Okay, I'm I guess I'm I'm being a little too Victoria centric in my comments. Oh. I don't know anywhere in Victoria okay. that I can go get it to go. That place. That's now the Thai orchard, orchard, yeah, orchid, 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 which Hunter of Tejas loves the Thai orchid, by the way. But, <laughs> Good, <laughs> but they used to have a, a brewery people, the pub in there. Oh yeah, they did for a little short long, amount of time. Yeah. Didn't last too long. I mean, Moonshine and Aircrafters. I mean, have good beer, but it's not their own beer. Um, so is that a Texas thing or is that just a rural thing? The lack of brew pubs, because they seem to be sprouting up. Yeah. Uh, everywhere yeah, in Colorado, everywhere. Well, Colorado, and everywhere else too. I don't, I don't know what has held back Texas. I mean, they're they're in Austin. I'm sure, sure. they would be in Austin. They're in Austin, yeah. but I don't know if there's any law. I was curious about that question too. The, what's held brew pubs back from their popularity? Because they, a lot of places are very very popular. Um, yeah. Good question. Uh, let's see, uh, out of El Paso on the shooting. The latest is three victims. Of gunfire at the Walmart remained in critical condition, so that that told it's 22 certainly could go higher. Uh, unfortunately, uh, then out of Belton, Texas, near Temple, there's a prosecutor saying they're going to seek the death penalty for a professional MMA fighter accusing the deaths of two people wow. whose bodies were found in a shallow grave in Oklahoma. Huh. Hmm. Do you know this MMA fighter, Tom Cedric Marks? No, not not on your. Unless he, had, unless he has a uh, different stage name. Yeah. Good. Some of those guys. He's 45 years old. Isn't that a little old to be? Well, MMA? maybe it's at the end of the career. I don't know. Wow. Then uh, AP's got some special investigation into Placido Domingo, famous hmm. opera singer that he's um, some kind of sexual assault uh, charges or allegations against him. 
EVS Viacom is announcing a merger um, on the latest on the trade war. Uh, President Trump is apparently delaying some of the tariffs against China. And then there's more about the Jeffrey Epstein suicide investigation. I heard the latest headline was one of the one of the guards who was watching him on the night of his suicide wasn't even on correctional. A guard, I heard that this morning too. Wasn't yeah. even correctional because they they're just kind of like pulling people off the street because they don't have enough. Yeah, we've, we've talked about that, haven't we? There's the, these jails and prisons don't have enough employees. They don't have enough guards or correctional officers. And so, you know, these kind of things happen. One report I heard yesterday said that five of the officers who were working that shift or over the weekend or whatever were on overtime. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah, they're just oh, working. On overtime for days, too. Yeah. Not, like Not just a couple of hours, but days and days, days, and days, and days, of, days yeah. of overtime because of shortage. Yeah. And other sad news out of Santa Fe, um, attorneys representing that teenager charged in the school shooting um, are seeking a mental health evaluation saying their client cannot understand the legal proceedings against him. And That's the one in Santa Fe, Texas. Santa Fe, Texas, Santa Fe, Texas yeah. And then um, police in Corsicana say a woman has been arrested after a young girl accidentally scalded herself with boiling water mm. and died when the woman failed to seek medical care for the child. Wow. wow. Oof. Sorry, I read that one. Um, all right. Well, that looks like enough. A lot, lot going on. Looking to see if anybody's got any other thoughts. Anything else? It was a lively conversation yesterday about uh, a variety of things. But uh, to answer the trivia question, who wrote Johnny Cash's song, A Boy Named Sue? I guess Chris Christopherson. You're throwing in Ray Stevens. And I threw out Jim Stafford. You threw in... Uh, Else. Joni Mitchell is Tom. Uh, who, was a lot, who was the first guy I mentioned? Who did you mention? Um, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, Jerry Lee Lewis. And uh, let's see what it is. Oh, we were not there. Shel Silverstein, the author of classic children's books like Where the Sidewalks End and Falling Up. Before Cash became famous, the song was originally on Silverstein's Silverstein's 1969 album, so it was on Boy Named Sue and his other country songs. Hmm. So, Shel Silverstein. What year was it? Well, it was on his album in 69, but I imagine Johnny Cash really did sometime in the 70s after that. So, anyway, there's your answer. Who knew? Who knew? Oh, but we didn't. No, we did not. So, uh, if you have um, any other comments, suggestions, news tips, give us a call here in the newsroom at 574-1222. Peace out.